किसी भी कलाकार का जीवन एक विस्तृत कैनवस की तरह होता है जिसमें वो अपनी कल्पना शक्ति अपने अनुभवों अपने विचारों से रंग भरता है और तब वो संपूर्ण कलाकृति हमारे सम्मुख प्रस्तुत होती है विधा कोई भी हो कलाकार का अंतर मन उसकी कला में झलकता है सुषम बेदी की याद में यह है आज के सत्र का नाम अमेरिका के हिंदी साहित्य की प्रमुख हस्ताक्षर सुषम बेदी का पिछले दिनों निधन हो गया उनकी स्मृति में उनकी पुत्री पूर्वा बेदी और छात्रा सोमा व्यास उनकी कविताएं और जीवन यात्रा का लेखा जोखा लेकर हमारे सम्मुख आ रही हैं कहते हैं किसी के जाने से एक जिंदगी तो खत्म हो सकती है पर जो रिश्ता उस इंसान के साथ होता है वो कभी खत्म नहीं होता वो हमारे साथ जीता रहता है एक खुशबू की तरह हमेशा हमारी यादों में घुला रहता है इस साल की शुरुआत में जब हम सब ने सुषम जी को खोया था तो ऐसा लगा कि बस अब सब खत्म पर वक्त के साथ ये एहसास हुआ कि उनका भौतिक शरीर भले ही हम सबसे दूर चला गया हो पर जो रिश्ता उन्होंने हम सब के साथ कायम किया था जो रिश्ता उनका हिंदी साहित्य और हिंदी भारतीय संस्कृति के साथ है उसकी महक तो हर तरफ रची बसी है और हो भी क्यों ना आखिर अमेरिका में हिंदी की भाषा की माँ उन्हें यू ही नहीं कहा जाता था लेखक कहानीकार कवियत्री अभिनेत्री एक बहुत अच्छी अध्यापिका जो माली की तरह हर एक विद्यार्थी में छुपी प्रतिभा को पहचान कर उसे संवारती और निखारती थी जैसे माली एक पौधे को अपना वक्त समय ऊर्जा सब देता है वैसे ही साहित्य के क्षेत्र में नई उभरती प्रतिभाओं को अपना मार्गदर्शन अपना वक्त अपनी ऊर्जा सब संचालित करती थी और रिश्ते बनाने की कला में तो वो माहिर थी तभी तो उनके परिवार के अलावा आज तक उनके विद्यार्थी उनके साथ काम करने वाले लोग उनके साथी उन्हें भीगी आंखों से याद करते हैं बस आज इसी मेहनत के साथ कुछ पल गुजारने के लिए हम दोनों साथ साथ बैठे हैं मैं सोमा व्यास और पूर्वा बेदी जो कि न सिर्फ एक प्रतिभाशाली अभिनेत्री हैं, बल्कि हमारी प्रिय सुषम जी की सुपुत्री भी हैं। आज की इस छोटी सी मुलाकात में हम याद करेंगे सुषम जी की कुछ खट्टी मीठी यादें और दिल को छूने वाली उनकी कुछ कविताएं पूर्वा थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस अ वेरी वॉर्म वेलकम थैंक यू सो मच फॉर हैविंग you and to think about her poems which were so uh, so beautiful um you know in these short little poems they convey so much story and emotion and depth so i'm really happy to to be that here so true and we are so glad that you are here why don't you share a special poem or a connection which you had with your mom yeah i will and before i do i just want to share that last year at this time she was in bal um and after this trip i remember her telling me actually from the hospital how wonderful meaningful that time was how she felt so much love and respect from her hindi speaking and writing colleagues and what a meaningful event it was so it, i'm really happy that here we are a year later we've of course lost her which is awful but that i'm able to be here in her stead and share some of her words that's so true anyway so <laughs> moving on um i did want to share uh one of the poems that i wanted to share a lot of people know it's called ghar aur bagicha and uh which is home and garden and i wanted to share it because when i think of my mom you know she's my mom she cooked amazing food tandoori chicken bangan ka bharta wonderful curry just really wonderful home healthy tasty foods and um you know but the interesting thing about my mom is as much as she was a wonderful cook she never told me i should learn how to cook and so actually i'm not much of a cook except for now and then when i said oh mommy um can you teach me how to make this dish i really love it and then she would teach me um but much like later in life you know not when i was a girl because as much as she loved you know taking care of her home and family she was a real feminist in that she never wanted to impose upon me her daughter that that was the way to be or that i needed to know how to you know cook and clean and do all of that and of course years later i have a family i have kids we're doing fine i cook a little bit um 
Um, so I really appreciated the feminist in her that could be both a, a staunch feminist and a loving mother and a wonderful, you know, wife to my dad. So here's home and garden. I do not need a house. I want to live in the garden. Don't give me those kitchen utensils, pictures to hang, tablecloths, pillows and pillowcases, brooms and dusters. I need air, earth, sun and rain, feathers and branches, wood and birds, trenches and ditches, stormy clouds, tidal ocean. Can you give me those? My love desires open skies, rainbow colors. I need to lie on green grass, not these colorful duktas or these silky saris, modest, protecting, the soft mattressed beds, quilts, silk nighties of disillusionment, escapes, deceptions, floral curtains of reassurances. I need instead to wrap around history, deal with politics, fight the blind and dark, aggressive armies and forces of conventions, break the fortresses of lines and rules. I have to find the words which are only mine, which can come out of me only, telling my inner story to touch me analyze me, give me voice, define me. I don't need a house, security or compromises, rotting society or the lopsided civilization of yours. Let me create my own world. Let me stay in the garden. Beautiful. Thank you so much for reciting this wonderful one. That was Sushamji, like a feminist at heart in her action, in her words and in her poems. So, Ghar or Bagicha. In Hindi, we have a lot of fun. It is a very beautiful story. Ghar or Bagicha. I don't want a house. I want to live in a house. Don't give me two of my eyes. The pictures of the pictures. The pictures of the pictures. तकिए और गिलाफ झाड़ू और झाड़न सोफे और गद्दियां मुझे चाहिए हवा जमीन धूप और बारिश पंख और डालियां जंगल परिंदे खंदक और खाइयां तूफानी बादल हर हराता समंदर दे सकोगे मेरा प्यार आकांक्षी है खुले आसमान का इंद्रधनुषी रंगों का मुझे लेटना है हरी घास पर मुझे नहीं चाहिए रंग बिरंगे सुरक्षाई दुपट्टे या रेशमी लाजवंती साड़ियां ये मुलायम गद्देदार पलंग खैराती रजाइयां बुलावों की रेशमी नाइटियां या आश्वासनों के फूलदार पर्दे मुझे ओढ़ना है इतिहास उलझना है राजनीति से लड़ना है रूढ़ियों की अंधी हमलावर फौजों से तोड़ने हैं लकीरों के अभेद किले खोज खोजने हैं वे शब्द जो सिर्फ मेरे हों मेरे भीतर से निकले मेरी अंतरकथा कहते मुझको छुए परसे परचे स्वर दे मुझे मुझको परिभाषा दे मुझे नहीं चाहिए घर सुरक्षा या समझौते घुल लगा समाज या एक पलड़े पर भारी तुम्हारी सभ्यता मुझे गढ़ने दो अपना संसार मुझे बगीचे में रहने दो मुझे बगीचे में रहने दो वॉट अ ब्यूटिफुल पॉइम पूर्वा बहुत सुंदर सुषम जी की पर्सनालिटी के बहुत डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स थे एंड एज अ डॉटर यू मस्ट बी नोइंग अ लॉट अबाउट हर मोर देन मी बट शी केम अक्रॉस एज अ वेरी लविंग पर्सन अ लविंग मदर अ लविंग वाइफ अ लविंग टीचर एंड डू यू डू यू रिमेम्बर एनी ऑफ हर पोएम व्हिच टॉक्स अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर एस्पेक्ट लव इन हर ओन वर्ड्स how she said absolutely said yeah you know love she wrote a poem about my father for him oh. And um, I love that one. It's called um, After You Left, well, in English. And um, she wrote it for him and it's very personal. Um, so I'd love to share that one. Please go ahead. After you left, whatever was there, anything you touched or you lived became you. 
the whiskey glass from which you drank, sitting on the side table, the plate with its blue line where you relished aloo paratha, or the corner of the sofa where you sat and read your New York Times, the flipping of pages spread out before you, the books on the shelf with their familiar titles, the shivering creases on the sheets or on the pillows, on the threshold of the room, your sandals, a question in your eyes, or the soap sticking to the tile of the bathroom, rough toothbrushes and toothpaste, the saris hanging in the closet which you saw me wearing, the earrings which on special occasions you picked, wrapped and had me wear. Now the touch of your fingers and the touch of your glance. I am thinking where you are not and where you are not can I be there? बहुत सुंदर, बहुत सुंदर। प्यार की एक बहुत डेफिनेशन अलग सी थी उनकी नजर में। And I remember once meeting her and your dad in one of the event and the love they had for each other, the amazing chemistry they had. It's just touching. So तुम्हारे जाने के बाद हिंदी में भी उतनी ही सुंदर है पूर्वा। जो कुछ भी था तुम्हारा छुआ, भोगा, जिया वह तुम हुआ कांच का गिलास जिसमें विस्की का घूंट भर तुमने तिपाई पर धर दिया वह नीली धारी वाली प्लेट जिसमें धरे पकवानों का तुम स्वाद लेते या सोफे का वे वह कोना जहां पसर कर तुम न्यूयॉर्क टाइम्स उलटते पलटते और फैला कर पढ़ते स्ट्रेल्फ पर धरी किताबें जिनका हर शीर्षक तुम्हारा जाना पहचाना था शयन कक्ष में कांपती तुम्हारी सांसें चादर की सलवटें तकिए के गड्ढे मंदिर की देरी पर उतरी तुम्हारी चप्पलें आंखों का वो सवाल या भाव गुसल खाने में टाइल से चिपका तुम्हारा साबुन खुरदरा टूथब्रश और वह खास दंत मंजन आलमारी में लटकी वे साड़ियां जिन्हें मुझे पहनते तुमने निहारा कानों के वे बूंदे जिनको किन्हीं मुबारक घड़ी में तुम ही ने चुन्हा बंधवाया पहनाया अब उन पर धरा तुम्हारी उंगलियों का स्पर्श तुम्हारी दृष्टि की छुवन सोचती हूँ तुम कहा नहीं हो जहा नहीं हो वहां हो सकती हूं मैं तुम्हारे जाने के बाद ब्यूटीफुल थैंक यू सो मच सुषम जी की हर एक चीज को लेके जो उनके शब्द निकल के आते थे अंदर से दे वर लाइक ब्यूटीफुल विच केम फ्रॉम हर हार्ट एंड आई एम श्योर लाइक you know many others like all we came from india and it's not easy being here in a different country from starting everything from the scratch mm-hmm. as a migrant and i'm sure your parents had gone through lots of ups and downs before they were able to find their own place create a nice family uh, among themselves and uh, providing a great future for both of you do you remember i think i do remember one of our poem which Uh, very like very nicely puts up the dilemma of a migrant uh, person uh, the real I mean, um, what they go through would you like to share that one with us i would love to my two parallel lives a migrant state of mind i have two parallel lives one seeks the darkness other one is wrapped in darkness one craves for a light other one is blinded by the light one is longing for you other one is trying to avoid you i'm waiting for that one evening where both of them would meet but i get irritated by the wait while i keep hustling with the present i pamper the lost past and i get stuck in an ephemeral have i wished for this parallelism this bifurcation riding on two boats at the same time is this what desire is or is it the boredom of a journey which becomes the seed of a womb and gives birth to this parallelism this duplicity but this boredom is infertile and the birth from this infertile womb would only give birth to hundreds of daryodhans just like gandhari's uterus why should i wish for daryodhans but then Why should I wish for Yudhishthir either? 
I myself am a half-truth. Brightness, absence of light. Darkness, absence of darkness. Silence, a deafening sound of silence. Like a war cry, making ears numb. Always swinging in between. Falsehood of trust and truths of misbelief. And to come back and realize to live or not to live those relationships. Through these, I have learned what's good and bad for me. And though I may not be a good judge of diamond, but I can easily identify the coal. I may not find a pearl, but I can easily identify the sand. For me, Krishna is also a beaten slogan. Whether I adorn him in flashy attire in Queen's temple or at a place of worship in my apartment, I do not long for the Krishna who filled Arjun with vigor in Mahabharat. Mahabharat is the story of two envious brothers and their cunning friend Krishna who never gets defeated. And like any power struck capitalist deceives those brothers to kill each other while with his stomach full, himself watches the spectacle of pandemic, rape, and vomits Gita on a celluloid screen, on a wireless wire. Culture has left the throne of my body. Culture has left the throne of my mind and body, and now sitting in a fashion designer's boutique, in the menu of a Mughalai restaurant, in the lewd brass statues or in the imitation of Taj like a casino with clumsy and inexpensive decoration, every Tom, Dick and Harry turns into representative of Indian culture as if essence of India is an orphaned kid in search of a mother or it is an infamous woman in search of a name. Is it divided or subtle this mysterious heart of mine between two parallel lives? but live somewhere else in an endless space or that in an unknown closed alley. Whatever happens, I have to live. I have to take shelter in a safe nucleus. This is the only truth of these two lives, whether true or false. But then whatever it is, it is. Wow, simply wow. wow. And that's what like Sushamji, Sushamji is all about. Never hesitant to call a spade a spade. The way she put it, Ek Pravasi ki manasthiti, itne achche shabdo me us antar dvand ko unho ne rakha hai, ki iska Hindi ka jo version hai, jo unki original poem hai, wo bhi bohat achhi tarah is antar dvand ko batati hai. Meri do zindagiya saman antar, Ek Pravasi ki manasthiti. Ek andhere ko khoshti, dousri andhere se lipti. Ek roshni ko tarasti, दूसरी रोशनी से चुंदी आई एक तुम तक पहुंचने को आकुल दूसरी तुम ही से बचती कतरा की किसी संझा में दोनों के मिलके आने का इंतजार करती और चिढ़ती इंतजार के नाम से उलझती गुलझती वर्तमान से सहेजती बिछड़े अतीत को रह जाती अटकी किसी अर्ध विराम में क्या मेरी चाही है यह समानांतरता यह बंटवारा यह दो नावों की सवारी क्या यह चाहना है या कि एक सफर की उबाहट ही क्षर होते होते गर्व का बीज बन जाती है और जन्म देती है इस समानांतरता को इस दोहरेपन को लेकिन उबाहट तो बांझ है इस बांझ से पैदा होने वाला गांधारी के पेट से निकले गोले की तरह सिर्फ सैकड़ों दुर्योधनों को जन्म देगा क्यों वो चाह मुझे दुर्योधनों की परंतु युधिष्ठरों की कामना भी क्यों हो मुझे अर्ध सत्य तो मैं खुद हूं रोशनी ना रोशनी अंधेरे अन अंधेरे चुप या बोलती खामोशी के युद्ध नाद से बधिराती झूठे विश्वासों और सच्चे बुलावों में हिंडोलती जीने न जीने के रिश्तों में लूटती यूं अपने अच्छे बुरे की पहचान मैंने भली सीखी है हीरे की परख ना कर पाऊ कोयले की परख जरूर जानी है मोती न टटोल पाऊ रेत की पहचान मुझे खूब आती है मेरे लिए तो कृष्ण भी पिटा हुआ नारा भर है उसे चाहे चमकती धमकती पोशाक पहना क्वींस के मंदिर में बैठा दूं या अपने अपार्टमेंट के पूजा शेल्फ में महाभारत के अर्जुन में ऊर्जा उर्ज, भर देने वाला कृष्ण मुझे रास नहीं आता 
महाभारत कहानी है दो दुश्मन भाइयों की जिनका चालाक दोस्त कृष्ण कहीं मार नहीं खाता और किसी पूंजीवादी शक्ति की तरह बहका देता है उन भाइयों को आपस में लड़ भिड़ मर जाने को भरे पेट देखता है तमाशा मारा मारी का बलात्कार का और उगलता है गीता सेल्यूलाइट के पर्दे पर बेतार तार पर संस्कृति मेरे तन मन का सिंहासन छोड़ आप बैठी है किसी फैशन डिजाइनर के बुटीक में किसी मुगलई रेस्तरा के मेन्यू में पीतल की बेढब मूर्तियों में या ताज की नकल का दम्ब भरती किसी जुआ खाने की बेढंगी और सस्ती सजावट में हर कोई टुच्चा पुच्चा टटपुंजिया बन जाता है यहाँ भारतीयता का प्रतिनिधि भारतीयता जैसे कोई अनाथ बालक हो किसी धाय की खोज में या कोई बदनाम औरत हो एक नाम की खोज में बटा है कि बसा है यह अदृश्य रहस्य मन इन दो जिंदगियों में पर रहता है कहीं और किसी अंतहीन अंतरिक्ष में या कि किसी अबूझ बंद गली में कुछ भी हो मुझे तो जीना है पनाह लेनी है किसी महफूज मरकज में ये दो जिंदगियों का इकलौता सच है सच है कि झूठ है जो भी है है ये थी एक प्रवासी की मनस्थिति जो कि बहुत ही देखा जाए तो बहुत दर्द भी था इसमें बहुत सारा द्वंद भी था इज लॉर्ड ऑफ पेन लॉर्ड ऑफ लाभ Uh, it's it's a mix uh, mix of everything yeah and, and you know my mom really you know she really dedicated much of her writing to the immigrant experience to you know in her novels her short stories um so what i love about this poem is it really just encapsulates in you know just a few minutes so much of that struggle and no wonder we called her the mother of hindi literature in usa she was the one uh, who wow. so much hindi in uh, america so wow. <laughs> everything that's amazing that's a wonderful name <laughs> and uh, interestingly uh, purva even after i wanted to poem, share another poem you would like to share another poem um, please go ahead um, a sort of um, she has this poem flight which flight. has a positive I, kind yes, of message in it to, Yes, yeah. That's what I was about to say. That after going through all these things, also the kind of positivity <laughs> you had—that was amazing. And I was about to request you to share that poem of hers. Please go. Oh, ahead. good. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Great. <laughs> okay, great. So I'll share flight. Yes. Okay. And maybe if you want to press uh, mute, Soma, then it won't pick up the little sounds while I read oh, it. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> you talked about flying together. I asked, "Where are the wings?" You said, "I will provide you with the wings." I started flying. I asked again, "Where are the wings?" You said, "See, I have catched it." I started flying again. Suddenly the stormy wind started blowing. I got scared. I asked again, "Where are the wings?" You consoled, "It's right there. Keep flying." I started looking here and there for the wings. I fell, tossed by wind on the rocky ground in the thorny bushes. You said you didn't possess wings, but you used to think that wings grow as you take a flight then i saw you were flying too without wings you had good control over wind you were hugging sky i didn't want to wait for your fall while lying on the floor neither i want to see you tumbling and tossing i feel scared that like me you might fall too on this burning earth agonizing or you might start believing me forgetting your strength and desire to fly or who knows if your unflinching trust actually helps you in growing wings and you keep flying so is there any chance of me growing wings too don't forget to unmute now yes <laughs> so much 
it was a beautiful poem purva thank you so much for sharing this and especially in today's environment when everything is becoming so grim so dull uh, we need such positivity so i will uh, i would really like to recite this in hindi as well uh, udan i would love that tumne saath udne ki baat kahi thi maine pucha pank kahan hai tumne kaha main dunga pank tumhe main udne lagi phir pucha pank kahan hai तुमने कहा वो देखो लगा दिए मैं फिर से उड़ने लगी सहसा तूफानी हवा बह चली मैं डरी फिर से पूछा पंख कहाँ है तुमने कहा वो है तो उड़ती रहो मैं इधर उधर खोजने खोजने लगी पंख थपेड़े खाती गिर पड़ी पथरीली जमीन पर कटीली झाड़ियों में तुमने कहा पंख नहीं थे तुम्हारे पास पर सोचते थे उड़ान भरने से उगाते हैं पंख फिर मैंने देखा तुम भी उड़ रहे थे बिना पंखों के हवा तुम्हारे काबू में थी आसमान तुम्हारी बाहों में धरती पर पड़ी मैं तुम्हारे गिरने का इंतजार नहीं करना चाहती तुम्हें हर हराते भर भराते देखना भी नहीं चाहती डरती हूँ कि यूं ही तड़फड़ा कर तुम भी चले आओगे जलती भू पर और उड़ने की ताकत या इच्छा भूल मेरी हा में हा मिलाने लगोगे या कौन जाने अकाट्य विश्वास ही उगा दे तुम्हारे पंख और तुम उड़ते ही रहो तो क्या पंख उगेंगे मेरे भी कभी ये थी उड़ान अगेन बहुत बहुत प्यारा मैसेज है बहुत ही सकारात्मक सोच वाली कविता है ये कुछ आदमी इट्स ऑल अबाउट योर इमेजिनेशन इफ यू इमेजिन यू कैन डू दैट सो दैट वाज ब्यूटीफुल या एंड वी कैन आई थिंक वी कैन जस्ट कीप गोइंग ऑन एंड ऑन पूर्वा देयर इज सो मच टू टॉक अबाउट योर मदर बट आई थिंक वी आर रनिंग आउट ऑफ अ बिट टाइम हियर so thank you so much for being here uh, sharing these beautiful poems and sweet memories i wish it was a face to face meeting and i could just hug you uh, i know me too to you would just feel that i was conversing with her uh, we can never forget uh, we are so grateful for her invaluable contribution to hindi language literature and culture thank you so much thank you for having me dhanyawad Take care. ऐसा कहा जाता है कि नाटकों में तत्कालीन समाज का प्रतिबिंब नजर आता है और कई बार नाटक देखते हुए हमें भी ऐसा लगता है कि ये पात्र हमारी ही तो कहानी कह रहा है आज एक लघु नाटक जो अंग्रेजी भाषा में है हम प्रस्तुत कर रहे हैं इसके निर्देशक हैं आनंद राव और इस नाटक का शीर्षक है ओवर तो चलिए हम आनंद लेते हैं इस लघु नाटक का हेलो नमस्ते माय नेम इज आनंद राव एंड आई एम टॉकिंग टू यू फ्रॉम न्यू जर्सी यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका Welcome to Namerica's production of Alice Gerstenberg's Overtones. Overtones is a very popular play. I'm pretty sure many of you may have watched it. And today I'm directing Overtones which has a fabulous cast of four women. What happens in the play is two very good friends, Margaret and Harriet. They decide to meet for having tea and some cake. but the reality is they don't like each other but they pretend to like each other when they meet so what follows is their minds tell them something else but they contrive to behave like somebody else so what the playwright has done here is their minds have personifications they are separate characters by themselves so we actually have four women here two of them real and two of them 
their minds. So what their mind says actually appears. So let's go and say hello to the characters. Harriet, Harriet, are you there, dear? There is Harriet. I am what you wish the world to believe you are. And she is followed by Hetty, her alter ego. Hetty, are you there, Hetty? Ah, Hi. there she is. I am crude and real. You are my appearance in the world. Yes, she is Harriet's mind. And then her Harriet's dear friend, or dear friend, Margaret makes her presence. Margaret comes in. Are you there, Margaret? Ah, there is the lovely Margaret. My life is complete. Oh, yeah, and she is followed by her alter ego who speaks her mind. There she is, Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Go ahead. Finish what I don't want to say. These are the four women, two of them real and two of them the minds and the emotions. So that's a play we're going to watch. That's Alice Gerstensberg's Overtones. Okay, so before you go, Namerica is a video channel that I produce from the United States and we do Kannada as well as English content, original video content. And please subscribe to youtube.com Namerica, N-A-M-M-E-R-I-C-A, -M -M -E that you see it right down here. And you can watch all our plays. Many of them are in Kannada too. And there are a lot of interviews, some of them in English. Uh, with people from Bollywood and Sandalwood and American entertainment industry as well. All right, now let's go watch Namerica's production of Alice Gerstenberg's Overtones. Harriet! 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 My other self! My train self! Yes! I want to talk to you. Well? Oh, Harriet! You're so beautiful today! Am I presentable, Hetty? Suits me! I've tried to make the best of the good points. My passions are deeper than yours. I can't keep the masks on as you do. I'm crude and real. You are my appearance in the world. I am what the world wish to believe you are. You are the part of me that has been trained. I am your educated self. Yes, I am the rushing river and you are the eyes or the current. I am your subtle overtones. But together we are one woman, the wife of Charles Goodrich. There I disagree with you, Hetty. I alone am his wife. Oh, Harriet, how can you say such a thing? Certainly. I'm the one who flatters him. I have to be the one who talks to him. If I gave you a chance, you will tell him at once that you dislike him. Oh, I don't love him. That's certain. Certainly. You leave all the fibbing to me. He doesn't suspect that my calm, suave manner hides your hatred. Considering the amount of scheming it causes me, it can be safely said that he is my husband. Oh, if you love him. <laughs> I? I haven't any feelings. It isn't my business to love anybody. Then why need you object to calling him my husband? I resent your appropriation of a man who is managed only through the cleverness of my artifice. You may be clever enough to deceive him, Harriet, but I'm one of the still who suffers. I can't forget he's my husband. I cannot forget I might have been married to John Caldwell. How foolish of you to remember John just because we met his wife by chance. That's what I want to talk to you about. She may be here any moment. I want to advise you about what to say to her this afternoon. By all means, tell me now and don't interrupt while she's here. You have a most annoying habit of talking to me when people are present. 
Sometimes it is all I can do is keep my poise and appear not to be listening to you. Well, impress her. <laughs> Hetty, dear, it is not my custom to impress people. I hate her. I can't let her see that. I hate her because she married John. Only after you had refused him. Oh, was it my fault that I refused him? That's right. Blame me. It was your fault. You told me he was too poor and never would be able to do anything in painting. Look at him now. Not in Europe. Just returned eight years in Paris. Famous. It was too poor a gamble at the time. It was much safer to accept Charles' money and position. And then John married Margaret within the year. Out of spite. Freckled, cocky looking thing she was too. Yeah, Europe improved her. She was stunning the other morning. Make her jealous today. Ah, shall I be haughty or cordial or caustic or you can... Above all else, you must let her know that we are rich. Oh, yes. I do that quite easily now. You must put it on a bit. Never fear. Tell her I love my husband. My husband? <laughs> are you going to quarrel with me? No, I have no desire to quarrel with you. It is quite too uncomfortable. I couldn't get away from you if I tried. You were a stupid fool to make me refuse, John. I'll never forgive you, never. Don't get me all excited. I'll be in no condition to meet her properly this afternoon. I could choke you of robbing me of John. Don't bust me. You don't know how you have made me suffer. It is not my business to have heartaches. You're bloodless. You are nothing but a sham. Sham. Why, I... Be quiet. I can't let her see her that I have been fighting with my inner self. No. After all my sufferings, you say it has cost you more than it has cost me to be married to Charles? But it's the pain here in my heart. I've paid the price. I've paid the price. Charles is not your husband. He is. He isn't. He is. He isn't. I'll kill you. Don't. Don't. You're stronger than I. You are. You say he's mine. He's ours. There she is now. Wait. I can't let the telephone go down there, you're my real self. It is improper. Show Mrs. Cadwell up. Oh, I'm so excited. My heart's in my mouth. A nice state you put my nerves into. Don't let her see you're nervous. Quick, put that veil on or she'll see you shining through me. Well, well, tell her Charles is rich and fascinating. Boast of her friends. Make her feel she needs us. I'll make her ask John to paint us. That's just my thought. If John <laughs> paints our portraits, and we can wear an exquisite gown. And make him fall in love again. <laughs> yes. Oh, Margaret. I'm so glad to see you. That's a lie. It is enchanting to see you too, Harriet. Oh, I'd bite you if I did. Wasn't our meeting a stroke of luck? I thought of you so often, Harriet, and to come back and find you living in New York. <laughs> Mr. Goodrich has many interests here. Flatter her. 
I know. Mr. Goodrich is so successful. Tell her we are rich. Oh my, what a beautiful lamp. <laughs> Do you like it? Miss, I'm afraid Charles paid an extravagant price. I don't believe it. I am sure he must have. How well are you looking, Margaret? Oh, yes, you are not. There are circles under your eyes. I haven't eaten since breakfast and I'm hungry. How well you're looking too. You have hard lines about your lips. Are you happy? Why shouldn't I look well? My life is full, happy, complete. I wonder. Tell her we have an automobile. My life is complete too. My heart is torn with sorrow. My husband cannot make a living. He will kill himself if he does not get an order for a painting. You must come and see us in our studio. John is doing some excellent portraits. He cannot begin to fill his orders. Tell her we have an automobile. Do you take lemon in your tea? Take cream, take cream, it's more filling. Um, no, cream, if you please. Oh, um, how cozy. Only cakes, I could eat them all. How many lumps? Sugar is nourishing. Um, three, please. I used to drink very sweet coffee in Turkey. But ever since I've been back, it's been... Oh, I don't believe you were ever in Turkey. I wasn't, but it's none of your business. Have you been in Turkey? Tell me all about it. Ooh, change the subject. You must go there. You have such good taste in dress. You will find the costumes very alluring. Isn't she going to pass the cakes? John painted several portraits there. Why don't you stop her bragging and tell her we have an automobile? Cake? Yes, at last. Thank you. Automobile! Follow up the costumes with the suggestion that she would make a good model for John. It isn't too early to start getting what you came for. Oh, oh what, what delicious cake. There's your chance for the auto. Yes. Isn't it a good cake? <laughs> There's always a great many people buying it at Harper's. I sat in my automobile this morning 15 minutes for my chauffeur to get it. Make her order a portrait. If you stopped at Harper's, you must have noticed the gowns at Henderson's. Aren't the shop windows alluring these days? <laughs> Even my chauffeur notices them. I know you have an automobile. I heard you the first time. I notice the gowns with an artist's eye as John does. The one you have on, my dear, is very paintable. Oh, don't let her see you're anxious to be painted. Oh, it's just a little model. Don't perhaps see get the order. Perhaps this isn't the gown itself, but the way you wear it that pleases the eye. Some people can wear anything with grace. Yes, I'm very graceful. <sighs> you flatter me, my dear. On the contrary, Harriet, I have an intense admiration for you. I remember how beautiful you were. <laughs> Girl, in fact, I was quite jealous of you when John was paying you so much attention. She's gloating because I lost him. 
Oh, those were childhood days in a country town. Oh, she's trying to make you feel that John was only a country boy. Most great men have come from the country. There is a fair chance John will be added to that list. I know it. I'm a bitterly jealous of you. Undoubtedly, he owes much of his success to you, Margaret. Your experience in economy and your ability to endure hardship. Those first few years in Paris must have been a struggle. Oh, she's sneering at your poverty. Yes, we did find life difficult at first. Not the luxurious start of a girl who's married into wealth. Oh, deny that you married Charles for his money. But John and I are so congenial in our tastes that we were impervious to hardship and unhappiness. Do you love each other? Is it really true? Did you have all the romance of starving for his art? Oh, she's taunting you. Get even with her. Not for long. Prince Rear soon discovered John's genius and introduced him royally to wealthy Parisians who gave him many orders. Oh, are you telling the truth or are you lying? If he had so many opportunities, he must have had great inducements to come to the States. We did, but not the kind you think. John became a rage among Americans traveling in France and they simply insisted upon him coming here. Whom is he going to paint here? Oh, oh what names dare I make up? Uh, at present, Miss Dorothy Ainsworth is posing. You may not know her, but she is the daughter of a wealthy miner who stuck gold in Alaska. I dare say there are many Western people we have never heard of. You must have found social life in New York so interesting. After the simplicity of our hometown, Harriet. Oh, there is no need to remind us that our beginnings were the same. Of course, uh, Charles' family made everything delightful for us. They are so well connected. Flatter her. Heard it mentioned yesterday that you made yourself quite popular. Someone even said you have, you're very clever. Who told you that? Nobody. Well, confidence must be suspected. I mean, respected. <laughs> said you're gaining quite a reputation as the critic of the arts. I make no pretenses. Are you and Mr. Goodrich interested in the same things too? Uh, no. Yes, indeed. Charles and I are inseparable. Oh, I wonder. Do you have another cake? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, no. No, I really shouldn't. After my big luncheon, John took me to the Ritz. And we're invited to the Bedfords for dinner. You know, they have such a magnificent house by the drive. I really shouldn't, but your cakes are so good. And starving. More tea? Yes. No, thank you. How wonderfully life has arranged itself for you, Margaret. Wealth, position, a happy marriage, of every opportunity in life to enjoy pleasures, beauty, and the arts. Oh, how happy you must be. Don't call me happy. I've never been happy since I gave up John. All these years without him, a future without him. No, no. I shall win him back and away from you, away from you. 
I sometimes think it is unfair for any one of us to be as happy as I am. Charles and I are as much in love now as when we were married. To me, he's just the dearest man in the world. Oh, my John is. I love him so much, I could die for him. I'm going through hunger and want to make him great and he loves me. He worships me. I should like to meet Mr. Goodrich. Bring him to the studio. John is doing some sketches and he would like to show. Not many because all his portraits are bought by the subjects. He gets as much as $4,000 now. Oh, don't pay that much. As much as that? It's not really too much when one considers John is the foremost rank of artists today. A picture painted by him now will double or triple in value. Oh, it's all a lie. He's growing weak with despair. Does he paint all day long? No, he draws advertisements for our bread. When you and your husband come, telephone first. Yes, so she can get all the advertisements out of the way. Otherwise, you might come when he has a sitter. John refuses to let me disturb him then. You know, make her ask for an order. Lagrange offered to paint me for a thousand. Louis Lagrange's reputation isn't worth that much. Well, I've heard his work well mentioned. Yes, he's doing some splendid work. Oh dear me, no. He is only praised by the masses. He isn't at all respected by the artists themselves. Oh, must I really pay full price? Lagrange thought that I would make a good subject. Yes, let her, let her fish for it. Of course you would. Why don't you let Lagrange paint you if you trust him? Oh, she doesn't seem too anxious to have John do it. But if Lagrange isn't accepted by artists, it would be a waste of time to go for him. I think Wouldn't it, it would. I think it would. Give us the order. John is so despondent, he can't endure much longer. Help us, help me, save us. Don't seem too eager. And yet, if he charges only a thousand, one might consider it. If you really wish to be painted, why don't you give a little more and have it really worth your while? John may be induced to doing it for a little below his price, considering we used to be such good friends. <laughs> That's very nice of you, Margaret. Of course, I don't, you well, know. For God's sake, say yes. Of course, I don't know whether John would. He is very peculiar in such matters. He sets his value on his work and thinks it's beneath him to discuss price. You need not try and make us feel small. Still, I might quite delicately mention to him in as much as you have many influential friends. You wouldn't. You would be glad to. That's what I don't want to say. Help her out. Help her out. Oh yes, introductions will follow the exhibition of my portrait. No doubt, I will <laughs> be patronizing. No doubt, I shall be able to introduce your husband to his advantage. Who saved? If I find John in a prepetitious mood, I shall take the pleasure, for your sake, to tell him about your beauty. Just as you are sitting now, my dear, would be a lovely pose. We can go now. Don't let her think she's doing us a favor. It will give me pleasure to add my name to your husband's list of patronesses. 
who run home and tell John the good news. Little did I guess, little did I guess when I came for a pleasant chat about old times that this would develop into a business arrangement. I had no idea, Harriet, that you had any intentions of being painted by Lagrange too. Oh, well, I just came in time to rescue you. Run home and tell John, hurry, hurry. You managed the order very neatly. And she doesn't suspect that you wanted it. <laughs> now, if I'm not satisfied with my portrait, I shall blame you, Margaret. Dear, I'm relying upon your opinion of John's talent. Oh, she doesn't suspect what you came for. Run home and tell John. <laughs> you always had a brilliant mind, Margaret. <laughs> it is you who flatters now. Oh, you don't have to stay so long. Hurry home. Ah, one does not flatter when one tells the truth. Well, I must be going or you will have me completely under your spell. Yes, do go. I have to dress for dinner. Aw, don't hurry. I hate you. No, I really should. But I hope we should see each other often in the studio. I find you very stimulating. I hate you. It is indeed gratifying to find a kindred spirit. I came for your gold. How delightful it is to know you again. I'm going to make you and your husband suffer. My kind regards to John. Oh, he has forgotten all about you. He will be so happy to receive them. I can hardly wait to talk to him again. I shall wait then until you send me a word. I shall speak to John about it as soon as I can and tell you when to come. Oh, love him. I love him. He's starving. I'm starving. I'm going to take him away from you. Away from you. I want your money and your influence. I am going to rob you. Rob you. Rob you. I had such a delightful afternoon, Harriet. It has been a joy to see you. Goodbye. Goodbye, my dear. Sorry, Curtain falls and that's the end of the play. Thank you very much for watching and uh, thank you very much. It was an honor to present this play at the Tagore International Arts Festival. And uh, this has been a great experience for us and I hope you enjoyed it. So let me introduce you to the cast members. Um, as Harriet, it was Jyoti Praswala. Hi. Hi. Uh, you can stay on, you don't have to exit. And as Hetty, it was Lakshmi Rao. And Margaret was played by Swati Anand. Hello. And Devyani played Maggie. Devyani Banerjee. Hi. Yeah, it, it was a wonderful experience for us and I hope you're going to have as much fun watching this uh, short play as much as fun we had uh, pr creating this for you. Uh, please go to the America YouTube channel and subscribe and uh, watch us and we have other plays as well. Uh, I hope to perform again for all of you. Alright, thank you and Namaste. तरंग इस सत्र में आप सभी का स्वागत आज हमारे साथ हैं गायिका संजुक्ता सेन 
संयुक्ता जी गुरु पद्मभूषण गिरिजा देवी जी की सुशिष्या हैं वे स्वयं एक कलाकार गुरु और संगीतकार हैं खयाल ठुमरी दादरा टप्पा कजरी चैती होरी जैसे उपशास्त्री गान प्रकारों को कुशलता के साथ प्रस्तुत करने वाली संयुक्ता सेन जिन्होंने अब तक अमेरिकन म्यूजियम ऑफ नेचुरल हिस्ट्री यूनाइटेड नेशन इंडियन काउंसिलेट न्यूयॉर्क शिकागो वॉशिंगटन डीसी जैसे कई स्थानों पर अपनी प्रस्तुति दी है और सभी को मंत्रमुग्ध किया है एक और खास बात कि भारत के पूर्व प्रधानमंत्री अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी की कविता को आपने संगीतबद्ध किया है और उसे अपनी आवाज भी दी है तो आइए हम सुनते हैं संगीत की ये सुंदर और भावभीनी प्रस्तुति संयुक्ता सेन के साथ अब मैं आपके समक्ष राजस्थान की प्रसिद्ध मान सुना रही हूँ केसरिया बाबा और धारो मान
नमस्कार युवा प्रतिभा इस विशेष सत्र में आप सभी का स्वागत भारतीय शास्त्रीय संगीत अपने आप में अनूठा है और गुरु शिष्य परंपरा के तहत प्राचीन काल से नए विद्यार्थियों को ये कला हस्तांतरित की जाती रही है स्वर संगम म्यूजिक स्कूल के माध्यम से गुरु हेमंत कुलकर्णी इसी परंपरा का निर्वाह कर रहे हैं और आज हम सभी के समक्ष हैं उनके युवा शिष्य जो गायन प्रस्तुत कर रहे हैं नमस्ते माय नेम इज ईशानवी मिश्रा आई एम अलेवन इयर्स ओल्ड एंड आई एम फ्रॉम द स्वर संगम म्यूजिक स्कूल माय गुरु इज श्री हेमंत कुलकर्णी जी एंड आई विल बी सिंगिंग अ सेमाई क्लासिकल सॉन्ग बादल घूमड़ बड़ा आए
Namaste. My name is Medha Anantani. I am 11 years old. I have been learning Hindustani classical music for the past seven months from Swarasanga Music School located in New Jersey. My guru is Sri Hemant Kulkarni Ji. Today I will be singing Jame To Se Nahi Bolu from the movie Sautela Bhai sung by Lata Mangeshkar Ji. I thank Vishwarang USA for this wonderful opportunity. Hello, my name is Neil Deshle, and today we'll be performing a duet, Deko Mosam. Chalki, chalki, 
चांदनी भी है हल्की हल्की एक दी भी है ऐसे में क्यों हम नहीं पर खो जाए ना for the past 10 years in Swarasangam School of Music, New Jersey. Today, I'll be performing a film song, Manamohana.
I'm 10 years old. Today I'll be presenting a Hindi film song called Laga Chunini Me Daag from the movie Dil Hi To Hai. I've been learning Hindustani classical music from Swarasangam School of Music located in New Jersey from my Guru Shri Hemant Kulkarni for the past five and a half years. I would like to thank Vishwarang for this opportunity for to sing today. <laughs> Oh, 
Did it not? Did it not? Did it not? 